guys welcome back and welcome if you are new here my name is Carissa and I'm so happy to have you here today today's video we are going to finally be doing my bookshelf tour now I do have a couple things I need to say before I start this is not my dream bookshelf this is not my aesthetic what I want my forever bookshelf to look like. If you guys have been around for a while, I have talked multiple times in other videos about a bookshelf that my husband and I are wanting to build. If you haven't seen those videos, quickly explain. We are wanting to do a built-in bookshelf in the living room, kind of just like a nice like big wall unit around the TV. We have like this whole vision in mind, but things came up that we were not expecting to. So budget had to be readdressed. So we've kind of put that on the back burner for right now. Had gone to Target, got a very simple bookshelf, which I did make a video of that. I'll link it for you guys below of me putting that bookshelf together and finally like taking my books out of storage and putting them on a bookshelf. That was a great day for me. It was a kind of a long video. So that's why I didn't do my whole like bookshelf tour in that video as well. With that being said, this isn't like aesthetic, it isn't perfect. It's just a spot to place all of my books out so I can see them. Don't have any cute like little decor pieces or anything. I feel like I've made a pretty cute little book nook, if you will, in this corner, which I'm happy with. But again, it's not ideal. And my ultimate dream is to have that bookshelf out in the living room. But I kind of want to throw all that out there just so you guys know like where we're at. Know that this is not my 100% dream shelf. Come to realize I do not have nearly as many books as I thought I did in comparison to the rest of booktube and book talk. <laughs> I have my one little tiny shelf that almost all my books fit on. I've got a little bit of overflow. But there are people who have like five, six, seven of these just like jam packed with books. I don't have that many books. I wish I had that many books and I'm working on like buying more books, but I really like to buy books that I love. I don't love having books that I don't like. Now that I've rambled for a little bit and told you guys a lot more information than you probably need, I'm gonna jump into it, give you this bookshelf tour. Finally. So I figured I would start over here just because you'll see some gaps in my bookshelf. And this kind of explains that I hung these little mini shelves and I didn't know what to put on them. And I was like, books, I'll put books on them. It'll look so cute. And I do think it looks really cute. And my plan has been, and I've already started switching out for the seasons. So like right now, these are my spring books, which I feel like look really pretty. Then if we come over here, I know we're very zoomed in over here at this shelf. We're working with what we've got because I want you to be able to see the books on the shelf while I point them out to you. I'm almost out of frame because I'm too short. We're working with it but once we get low on the shelf it'll be easier so starting with these two shelves are basically all of my dystopian books i've got the matched series by ali condi ugly series by scott westerfield which i loved those books i highly recommend i don't see many people talking about uglies that's a good that was a good series then um spin-off imposters in shatter city by scott westerfield and then next we have the selection which like I said, we've got a little gap here because the other book's on the shelf over there. Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Then another dystopian series, the, only the first two books though, The Cure and Awaken by K.A. Riley. They are books that my sister got me for Christmas. They're pretty good, but not good enough for me to finish the series. So I just have the first two books. Then on the next shelf, we've got the Life as We Knew It book series by Susan Beth Pfeffer. I've only read the first one so far. I still need to finish that series. Then we've got Eye of Minds by James Dashner, I think, by um, same author as Maze Runner. So I've got that over here. Now, real quick, things are not as organized as I'd like them to be. I tried to do it by genre and then kind of by size of the book. So like authors are split apart, but it just kind of like worked and everything fit that way. So that's kind of how I have it right now. Sandcastle Empire, I don't even remember this book. I think it was an Owl Crate book that I used to get 10, 15 years ago. It's been a long time. Fragments, which is another dystopian book. I, again, don't remember it. <laughs> the Testing, another dystopian I don't really remember. Um, Insurgent and Divergent, I know they are in the wrong order, but that's just how it worked for me on the shelf. Then a book called The Rising. Unite Me, the novellas for Shatter Me. I don't have the Shatter Me book because I got that from the library. I should get it. So I only have book two and then the novella. 
So anyway, that's all I have there. Then the 100 that they turned into a TV show. So I don't love the cover, but those were pretty interesting from what I remember. Maze Runner, Fifth Wave, Dangerous, Loneliest Girl in the Universe, Whisper. Then we get to at the very end, two of my absolute favorite reads. First one is All Our Yesterdays by Kristen Terrell. I will never stop recommending this book. It was amazing. I've read it multiple times. I absolutely love it. My brother got it for me for Christmas one year. I had no idea what it was, and it's now one of my favorites for forever. Then we've got The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I mean, it just, it's one of my favorites. That's all I have to say about it. Aliens, apparently. Apparently I'm into aliens, which kind of brings us down into our next shelf, starting into science fiction. Apparently I'm into that. I never realized it until I looked at my shelf one day and I was like, hey, I have a lot of sci-fi on this shelf. So we've got the Renegade series, which I liked so much more than I thought of. If you don't know, it's superheroes against villains and it's just cool. The covers are just beautiful and they just have all of this like color to them. I love it. The girls infiltrating the good guys and trying to like, you know, be a spy kind of a deal. I don't know. That's a bad explanation, but they're great books. I highly recommend them. Then we come into Lunar Chronicles. Is that what it's? Yeah, the Lunar Chronicles. I haven't read these ones in so long, but I love the covers of these ones. I love the books. They're so great by Marissa Meyer. Then we kind of move into mystery suspenseful kind of books. We've got the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I would say who it's by, but I really can't say the name. So I'll just show you because <laughs> I cannot say that last name, but these books are pretty good. Then we have Heist Society and Uncommon Criminals. I said it, I kept saying it wrong, um, by Allie Carter, I think it is. So that's really cool about like the family pulling cool jobs, kind of like Mission Impossible, but with teenagers, I guess. I don't know. I love these books. They were so good. I've read them a couple times as well. The Naturals series, also really great. It's kind of like CSI, but with teenagers. Serial killers, figuring out who did it. Ugh, they were, they were so good. I love these books. The Cousins by Karen and McManus. Didn't love that book, but I have it. I mean, it's okay, but I didn't love it. All right, and I'm really sorry, guys, if you're like having a hard time seeing the books. I'm trying really hard, but my little corner and situation that I'm working with is not the, the best situation, but we're doing our best, okay? I promise. But after that, we continue on with kind of our mystery books. I have the Inheritance Games trilogy, great books. Confessions of a Murder Suspect, don't remember it. It's been a long time. Trust me, I'm lying. Same one, don't really remember it. I have a lot of books that I would like to reread because there's so many books on the shelf that I've read and don't remember what they're even about. So I think I'm really gonna start doing that, just start rereading. The Cellar scared the crap out of me. I never read any books from that author again because it was very dark and didn't love it. <laughs> it scared me. If You Find Me, really sad, really deep, heavy book. Didn't love that one either. Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Don't love that one, sorry people. The Madman's Daughter, again, don't really remember it. Truly Devious, hated it. Sorry, not sorry, I know everyone loves this series. I literally hated it and wish I hadn't bought it, honestly. And I won't be finishing the series, so is what it is. So after that point, then we kind of go into like my fantasy reads, which is my absolute favorite genre, but I kind of have a lot of books in that genre. We've got Graceling and Bitter Blue. Again, I read them so long ago, don't really remember them. Didn't really love them from what I remember. We've got the Six of Crows duology with Kirk Kingdom. Didn't love those either, guys. I'm sorry, I know. Then I have um, a series, a trilogy, that I bought because I loved the first cover of the first book. It's Splintered, Ensnared, and Unhinged. A.G. Howard is the author, and they're just like a twist on Alice in Wonderland. And I just, I love these covers, like I remember when I first saw them, I was like, these are the most beautiful covers I've ever seen in my life. Ugh, they were, they're a little bit cringy now, but I love them and they're still kind of cool. I still kind of like them, but that was the main reason I bought them and they're actually pretty good. They're kind of dark, but I feel like most Alice in Wonderland retellings are dark because it's a very dark story to begin with. Anyway, after that we have Three Dark Crowns. Don't remember it. <laughs> Second to bottom shelf, I've got this first book. I don't even know if, you can, if it's in, even in frame. This book here is Vasa in the Night by Sarah Porter. I have no idea what this book is about. I have tried reading this book so many times. I cannot finish it. I think it's based off of like a Nordic 
tale or something Ru uh, a russian folk tale all i know like it's very trippy you feel like you're high <laughs> while you're reading it or like have some kind of a fever dream going on there's a store with chicken legs that dances and the owner of the store thinks everyone's stealing and tries to kill you the girl has a pocket doll who like talks and likes to steal her dad left because he wanted to become a dog and then she falls in love with the guy who is the stars like i don't i don't don't know I still and I should just get rid of it but it was an owl crate book again and I just can't get rid of it because I'm like I don't know what it is and maybe one day I'll actually finish it but every time I try and read it I'm like I feel like I'm going insane reading this book if anyone's ever read this or like understands like the story behind it let me know because I just I have no idea what that is <laughs> it's really weird uh yeah anyway moving on next one we've got Carval I've never finished that series because I didn't love the first one but I did love Once Upon a Broken Heart. That was good. After that is another one of my all-time favorites. We have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Again, obviously, I guess she's my favorite author because I love most of the books from her. But I love this story. I know it's hit or miss with some people, but for me, I went into it blind. I didn't know what the book was about. So if you can go into it blind, I highly recommend it because it made all the difference. I cried at the end. It was crazy and literally, do not read the last page but the last line of that book well don't read the last page ahead of time obviously but the last line in that book i was like <gasps> like my jaw dropped it was like what wait what like i my mind was blown like i just didn't see it coming i don't know how or why but i didn't and it was amazing so it's a five star read because this is the most amazing feeling i ever had after that we have sea witch i think this was like a little mermaid retelling but i can't remember i think i liked it <laughs> That's so terrible. I just need to reread all the books. I have so many of them. I have Daughter of the Pirate King, Daughter of the Siren Queen. I never, I don't know if I read the Siren Queen. I don't know if I read that one. I don't really remember them again. I want to reread them. I did have someone comment on a short about those books saying that it was their favorite and got them back into reading. So, you know, I might, I think I want to like pick it up and try it again. The Sleeping Prince, Violet Made of Thorns. I just mentioned that in a reading wrap up. I didn't love that book. Once Upon a Dream, As Old as Time, A Whole New World. These are like Disney story retellings and I was kind of into them and was like wanting to kind of buy all of them, but then I kind of got bored after the third one, so. I do also have Alice in Wonderland. Just a little like copy of it. It came in an owl crate box. So I was like, well, I'll keep it because you know, it's a legitimate book, so I have that. Then I have The Forest Queen, which I think is a Robin Hood retelling, as well as Hood, which is a Robin Hood retelling. Um, but that's his daughter. And I like that. I liked Hood. That was good. The Glass Sword and Red Queen. They should be swapped, but whatever. Um, Dorothy Must Die. Didn't love those. Don't really remember them. Kiss of Deception. I remember being very confused and the plot twist blew my mind, but I don't really remember anything past that. Spindle, Spelled, and Cruel. I think Cruel is actually dystopian, but it just doesn't fit up there. So then we have the very bottom shelf, which I'm just going to flip the camera around because I don't really want to lay on the floor. So let me do that. All right. So then we have our bottom shelf here. First one here is the Octonumi. And then we've got my little Stephanie Meyer section, I guess. Um, they're kind of puzzled in there. They just fit the way they do. They're not in order like they should be. Apparently, I have two new moons, which I don't know how that happened. It is my favorite book in the series. So, you know, it could be that. Um, we've got the Twilight flip book where it's Twilight on one side and then you flip it over and it's um, Life and Death, which is Twilight retold, but the girl is a vampire and the guy is human, I think is what it is. So it was very, very, very confusing. <laughs> So it wasn't my favorite. And then I have The Chemist, which is an adult fiction by Stephanie Meyer, which was pretty good. I didn't 100% love it, but it was, it was decent. I liked it. Midnight Sun. Oh my goodness. A five-star read. I loved this book. This book is huge. It is over 800 pages. This book is chunky. And I read it like it was 200 pages. This book made me love Twilight again, if you can believe it. I just, it was amazing. I highly recommend reading it. I put it off for so many years thinking it can't be that good. I figured it would kind of be like life and death. Way, way better. Highly recommend. Um, of course, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn. Then here in this section, I have kind of like historical fiction, I guess is the best way to categorize this one. I have Devil's Arithmetic 
Pride and Premeditation, Dictionary of Lost Words, Prisoners in the Palace, that was a good one, Alex and Eliza, The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, creepy, but very interesting, Two Crosses, Two Testaments, those are Christian historical fiction. Then I have Sphinx's Princess, Nobody's Princess, and The Darkest Hour. Then on the floor down here, I have a little stack of new, newly bought books that do not fit on my shelf. But we've got Once Upon a Broken Heart, which I read and loved. I just wanted a physical copy. Codename Verity. I need to read that. That was a gift. Tell Me Three Things, Darling Venom. Started it, hated it, didn't finish it, tried to return it. Amazon said keep it and get a new book. So I still have it. <laughs> Then we have Study in Charlotte, Violent Season, and Summer Broken Rules, which definitely gonna read that for summer. All right, and then we have last but certainly not least, the very top of my shelf, which I can barely reach or see. So let's see what we can do, um, which this kind of is just basically general fiction. Always Jane, If He Had Been With Me, Summer I Turned Pretty series, which I'm sorry, did not like that series either. My Life with the Walter Boys, Eliza and Her Monsters, Stonewick Trilogy, which I guess would be more historical fiction, but my childhood, I loved those books. Some of my favorites. And then over here, we have The Do-Over, Just One Wish, The Upside of Falling, Better Than the Movies, Boo, The Choice, Between the Notes, and City Love. Holy moly, I did not realize it's a lot more books when you're reading them out loud. I'm sorry guys, my lighting is crazy. I'm trying to use the natural light and I'm losing it very quickly. So I'm gonna close this off real quick. That was my bookshelf, my bookshelf tour, all of the books that I own. Oh, I did miss. I've got a couple decorative books. I have Second Star and The Unfinished Tales by J.R.R. Tolkien that I have on this little table. I had to throw those in there because that's all the books I own, and I want to make sure I mention all of them to you guys. But I hope you guys enjoy going through all of my books, a little bit of opinions on my books and everything. I know I didn't go super in-depth and like into all of the authors and all of that, because that would have taken really long, and that gets kind of boring. I might be crazy and try and link all the books. That make me a crazy person. Maybe, maybe I for sure, I for sure will link my favorite books. My absolute love these books, ride or die. I think you should read them. Um, they're great books. I think I'll go ahead and link those for you because I think to link all of them would be pretty much impossible and take me forever. So I'll go ahead, link all the books that I absolutely love and feel like you guys should read in the description box for you. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm so happy I finally made it, got to go through everything. It's kind of nice for me to like go through all of my books and kind of see like what books do I remember and don't remember? Which ones do I want to reread? And Hopefully I'll reread them. I think I will. I've kind of been sick of what's been in the bookstores. So I think I might just pick up what I have on my shelf. Do some good old rereading. I think it'll be good for me. But if you guys did enjoy this video, of course, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, do all of the things if you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next week on Friday in my next video. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down